Hello everyone and welcome to another Microsoft Excel tutorial for civil engineers and in this video I'll be showing you how to do the log Pearson and log normal methods for flood estimation and in the end of this video I'll be doing a comparison between the previous video on Gumbel's method with the log methods in this video. So the main difference between the log Pearson and log normal method is mainly in CS which is your skewness co coefficient here. So for log Pearson, we still need to manually calculate it, but for log normal, we can just take it as zero, and then once we have these skewness values, you can go to table three here, which is the, which is used to determine kz values. Then from there, we can go on to finding xt, which is x100 since t is 100 years. And I still have the same data here from the previous video, so that we can make an apples to apples comparison. So let's get started. So for the log methods for both Pearson and normal, we need to do all these uh, steps here. We need to calculate z, which is equal to log x, where x is the uh, individual data. And then we, we need to calculate z minus z bar cube, and then we need to calculate the summation of it, and we need to calculate the average value of z. Then we need to calculate the standard deviation of z. Then we can proceed with the skewness calculations. And then finally, we can find kz and then zt and xt. Whereas for the log normal method, uh, we can already find kz, but then we can't calculate zt because we don't have z bar and kz. Yet. I mean, we don't have z bar and standard deviation of z yet. So now I will type up equal sign log base 10 of 26. And the fastest way you could do this is to go and copy this to each column here, and then drag down. And then once we've already done this, we can just quickly check the equation if it's correct. So we click on uh, E10 over here. So it's using D10 here. So that's correct. So that means the formula is correct here. So again, if we check at uh, K10, so we have the value of J10 being used in the log. So that's correct. So now let's uh, copy and link these values here. It's uh, very useful to link them together so that if anything changes here, the z values here will also be uh, changed according to these values. So I'll quickly copy and paste them in. So now let's calculate z minus z bar cube. So we need to calculate z bar here. So z bar is equal to average of this entire table here. So hit enter. And I'll copy this and paste it over here because it's the same. Then now we can calculate z minus z bar cube. So Equal sign brackets this minus z bar and use absolute referencing here so that you can copy the equation. Oh, wait, hold on. This is supposed to be the average of z, not x. So be very careful there. So we need to calculate the average from all these here. And there we go. So that is our first cell for z minus z bar cube. So again, I'll be copying this and pasting 
uh, the formula in here. So as you can see, when we are pasting the formula, you can see that we are using uh, L15 over here, minus by Z bar, and it's cubed. So just double check again. So it's referencing all the correct cells. So now we can finally go and just drag down. And we've already calculated all of our Z minus Z bar cube values. Next, we can use the summation formula. So sum, open brackets, and select all of these Z minus Z bar cube columns here. So we get the Z minus Z bar cube and the summation of it. So now let's calculate the standard deviation. And as mentioned in the previous video, we are using the S variant because we have a sample, not a population. So standard deviation of Z. I just need to select all of these uh, Z columns here. And now we can calculate our skewness. So equal sign n times z minus z bar cube sum, uh, summation. So summation of z minus z bar cube, which is this one here, and divided by n, sorry, n minus 1. And n minus 2 multiplied by standard deviation cube. So let me just uh, put this additional brackets here. So yeah, I think I think you need to definitely put in these brackets here because if you don't, uh, you get a completely different number, which is not correct. So now we have minus zero point one two one, which is the correct skew skewness here for this case. So now that we've already calculated our CS here, now it's time to find the corresponding KZ value from table three. So from table three, uh. We have a negative uh, CS value here, so we need to go down uh, to the lower part here. So it's minus 0 0.12, so it's in between minus 0 0.1 and minus 0 0.2. So it's closer to minus 0 0.1. So we'll just look at minus 0 0.1 here and at a return period of 100 years, the, K the KZ value is 2.252. And Z100 here would be equal to Z bar add by KZ multiplied by the standard deviation. And now, because Z is in logarithm form to the base of 10, so we need to do an anti log here, which is equal to 10 to the power of ZT, which is Z100. So 10 to the power of ZT, so we have about 49.373 here, cubic meters per second. So now carrying on to the log normal method, we can copy these values over here. They are exactly the same. So paste and link. And the KZ value from table 3 would be at skewness 0. And at 100 years, it will be 2.326 for KZ. And now we calculate ZT, so it's the same. So Z bar plus KZ times standard deviation. Now let's anti log it and 
There we go. We've already calculated our uh, xt value here for log normal and log Pearson. So you can see that log normal produces a bigger value than log Pearson. It's all influenced by this kz value. The larger it is, it, the larger the value of xt will be. So now let's uh, compare all these uh, three methods together. So I'll just copy the value from Gumball here. So paste the link. Copy, paste the link. So out of all the three methods, you can see that the Gumball method produces a larger value for x100 so you, you can you can say that it is technically more conservative in this specific case than say the other log methods here the log methods especially the Pearson one tends to underestimate it although all these values are pretty close I must say they're not you know awfully different by you know 10 cubic meters per second or more still within six so yeah, it's still quite respectable, I would say. And that's it for this video today. I really do hope that you learned something useful here and that if you do like this video, do give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content and not miss it, please do subscribe and hit the bell button. And as always, I hope that uh, you stay safe in, th in these times. And as always, keep learning. Goodbye.